is shot in two. And that will not recover. They said, we could go in and plate this six months from now. We can put plates in the bone, but the nerve in your arm is gone. And I looked at him and I said, well, let me tell you this. I said, I've been praying and, and God has promised me that if I'll trust him, he'll heal me. So I said, you do the best you can and God will take care of the rest. And they said to me, oh, you have such a good attitude. I thought, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But let me tell you something. So they put me in a cast and it started right here, came, came up here, came around my waist, you know, and there was a, like a broomstick right here. And uh, this was 1983, so that's the technology they had. But So they, they said, now you can go home. We're going to let you go home. But you can't lay down. you got to be upright all the time. So they sent me home. And uh, when those opioids wore off, and, and, and I go and talk to, I go and talk to a heroin addiction recovery program in Richmond, Virginia. Matter of fact, my wife and I are going back up there next month. And I say to the men, I said, the only difference between me and you is one decision, one, one decision. Because when they hit me with that morphine, as I was sitting in that helicopter, my Sergeant Major reached in, grabbed my morphine syrette and whacked me in the leg. And when he hit me in the leg, it was the most euphoric feeling I've ever had. And that's a moment that I said, never again, I'll never put another opiate in my body. And I stuck with it. But when those opiates, I didn't know it, but they had, they were giving me opiates intravenously and then when I got home and those opiates wore off I was in the most horrible pain that I you can imagine I mean I didn't know a human could survive that and when I when I tell that you know I look in the audience and all the women are going he never had a baby fair enough but here's what I say ladies we have one on the front. If it hurts that bad, don't have any more. Because okay? I was tormented, and I went into one of these. Why me, Lord? Why me, God? I'm a Christian. I'm a. I'm not supposed to suffer like this. Why me, Lord? And uh, I didn't get an answer. And finally, I actually did this. I said, "Oh, Lord, in case you forgot." I'm the one that led the prayer before we went. And if you don't heal me, it's going to look bad on you. I'm not joking. I did. Well, let me tell you something. This, this is, you know, 1983. Here's the arm they wanted to take off. It's a good arm. In fact, it's about uh, a half, a, a quarter to a half inch shorter than the other arm. But you know what that did? I used to have a really bad slice. <laughs> now I got a hook. If you need to correct a slice, take a quarter inch off your left arm, boys. It works. In 1989, President George H.W. Bush sent us into Panama to bring down the government of a man named Manuel Noriega, a diabolical, evil Satan worshiper. I saw the evidence of his demonic worship as we hid his safe houses, as we went through that city, trying to push him out into the open, and we eventually did, and we captured him. But it, the president told us to go in and, and take down that government, turn it back over to the people of Panama, but also to protect the Americans that were stationed down there. As we got ready to launch that operation out of Howard Air Force Base, which was in the old canal zone, which at one time was sovereign U.S. territory. I got up on a platform and I actually found a photograph of this the other day too, that somebody took. I stood up on a platform, we gathered all our men around and we began to pray and we began to say, God, in the name of Jesus, you go with us now as we go in here to protect our, our fellow military people and their families. And as we go after this man to bring him down, give us success in the name of Jesus and protect us.
Jesus' name, amen. And then we sang God Bless America in that hangar there in Howard Air Force Base. And we launched our operations. I ran the first operation. The first operation was to go after a man named Kirk Muse. Kirk Muse had actually grown up down in the Canal Zone. He was an American, but he'd grown up in the Canal Zone. His father worked for the Canal Commission. And, and Kurt had been running a clandestine radio station broadcasting anti-Noriega propaganda with equipment that was provided to him by the CIA. And they caught him. <clears throat> they put him in prison. He'd been in prison about nine months, and President Bush said, make the first thing you do is getting that man out of prison and getting him on his way home to freedom. So we got a, we launched that operation. We came out across the canal, and as we started into Panama City, all of a sudden the skies erupted. Man, there were red tracers and green tracers coming at us, but they weren't coming up from the ground. They were coming out of high-rise buildings. We dug down as low as we could, got down low, went in and popped right up when we got to, to the prison he was in, which was called Carcel Modelo Prison, model prison. And we set him down on the roof and blew a hole in the roof, went down to the Every third level where his cell was, blew the door off his cell, got Kirk Hughes, took him up to the top and stuffed him inside what they call a little bird. Now they call it a little bird because it's little. But you've seen them probably in some of the movies and all that. And the guys would actually sit on the outside. The shooters would sit on the outside on a pod that just folded down and they'd just hold on. And we put him on the inside and the helicopter lifted off and started off down through Panama City there. And all of a sudden it started taking fire. Boom, boom, boom. One guy got hit in the leg. Another guy got hit in the, in the chest. And another guy, when the helicopter crashed, it went in hard. It landed, the, the skids landed on his toes. And, and cut, yeah, and he had to cut three of his own, three, is that th three? He had to cut three of his own. I'm from North Carolina. I'm a product of the North Carolina education system, okay? It's three, right? He had to cut three of his own toes off to get out from under it, to get away from the fire. And then one guy jumped out and started running, and he just had a plastic helmet on, and the rotor blades were still turning there slowly. But the rotor blades were still turning, and it hit him in the head. Kurt Muse was not, was not harmed. But I'm here to tell you that every one of those men went back to full duty because <clears throat> God had them in the palm of his hand. You see, God loves the warrior. They went back to full duty. God loves the warrior. And then in August of 1993, President Bill Clinton sent us into a place called Mogadishu, Somalia. You know the story is Black Hawk Down, if you've ever seen the movie or read the book. He sent us in to bring down a notorious warlord named Muhammad Faraya Deed. He was a Muslim that was the head of the Habergitter clan. He was an evil, diabolical man. He wanted to control all of Somalia, starting with the capital city of Mogadishu, and in one operation, Adid's militia killed 24 Pakistani peacekeepers under the UN Blue Beret. 